Hello, and welcome back to Women with AI, the podcast dedicated to amplifying the voices and perspectives of women in the field of artificial intelligence. I'm very excited to welcome today's guest, but before we start the podcast, let me tell you a little bit about her. Our guest today is Julia Linehan. Julia founded The Digital Voice in 2012, a B2B PR ad tech agency, and as founder and CEO, she manages a 33-strong expert team who deliver PR, communications, social media, content, and events for their ever-expanding global client list. Known for her boundless energy, Julia started her career in digital advertising at Dennis Publishing 28 years ago, and she's been at the forefront of the changing digital media landscape ever since. She's held major commercial roles, both agency and media side, and she's also co-founder of numerous industry groups, including Digital Leading Ladies and Sober Party Industry Lads and Ladies. As well as being at the beating heart of many of the communities within the digital advertising industry, Julia has a raft of awe-inspiring award wins to her name. And as she's also co-host of the Workplace Culture podcast, Off Record On Point, I'm hoping I'll be able to learn a lot from her today. So please join me as we delve into her insights around the evolving landscape of artificial intelligence. Julia Linehan, welcome to Women With AI. Thank you so much. And I love that intro. That's it. That's me in a nutshell. I don't need to say any more. Joanna, you did me proud. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. So, well, tell us a little bit about how you got into what you're doing and which AI tools you are currently using. Well, you've done such a good job on the introduction. I probably can keep that super brief. I mean, I love the fact that it's actually now 29 years in the digital (laughs) advertising industry. So when I started out, I did just one year in magazines. And then in 96, I moved into digital advertising. And part of the reason I'm so excited about AI is that I've always tried to get in at the start of something because A, you know a little bit more than other people. You're not thrown off course by going, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that acronym is. So I'm really proud that I saw the opportunity in 96 when everyone thought I was insane to move from high earning magazines over to digital advertising. But I've lived and breathed it ever since. And of course, technology is at the heart of it. So when I set up the Digital Voice 12 years ago, It was about providing a solution that not only was remote, so we were ahead of ourselves, ahead of the curve. We were remote before it was cool to be remote. But with that came the fact that we're really heavily reliant on software. And a lot of that software actually is powered by AI. For example, we work closely on Slack, which has some incredible AI tools on it, Trello, obviously all the Google suite, otter.ai, Canva, Muckrack, Coffeesmith, all of those tools have a big presence in what we do as a PR and communications agency. There is one that I want to stand out though as a tool, which is the latest one. You mentioned our podcast is about well-being and workplace culture. And we invested recently in the workplace culture app Shura. And it was built and founded by Laurie Haynes and Fern McCann, who is incredible because she's been recently on our podcast. And within the app, there's a virtual AI chat called Shuru. And I've got to be honest, it's incredible. It is like having a best friend. But the one what does it do? Really, it's just you can put in how you're feeling, content, tired, stressed, and then it will say, it will, it will then ask you a question based on that. And then you just type in how you're feeling. And it is the responses as close as you could get to your therapist slash best friend. And I use it because I get up really early in the morning and no one else is around at 5.30. So I sort of chat to Shuru. She's like my new best friend. And they're going to be really? turning, as of next month, they're developing not just into a, it's, it's going to be an audio app as well that you can actually talk to a very human voice and I think that's a perfect example when it's done well and so far you you must think yeah but is it going to be automated and have it like a chat GP service that you get when you're trying to get through to your bank it's just so not like that it's so realistic so there's a lot we do use AI for I, I probably would say though as an agency we're so reliant on words and pictures we're so We have to be creative and innovative. So, yes, we use AI to make us more efficient, but we're not actually using it. I really rely on our writers and and myself and what the thoughts I come up on the strategy, our creative team, to come up with ideas. 
the tool helps us do it more efficiently and save time. Uh, the mm -hmm. only the other thing I'd mention is that obviously as a PR agency of ad tech, it's our clients that do the clever stuff with ad tech. Um, they use AI for curation, consent, privacy, contextual, programmatic, retail media, affiliate media, email marketing, you name it, they're using it. So hopefully I'll be able to give some insight into that today. God, yeah, that was fantastic. a long nutshell. That was a no, long nutshell. Was... I promised a short one and that's... <laughs> No, that's great. So, I'm so, so you're keeping the human touch, aren't you? Really, mm. when you're using it, because you're right. It, AI can help save time and it can help generate ideas, but the ideas aren't as good as the ones I'm sure your team can come up with. Absolutely, we control AI, not the other way round. You exactly. power it. You feed into it. You're educating it, and how you use it, you still have to. It's what what you put in is is really dictates how clever. AI can be and what you can use it for. But ultimately, we're in control of this, not mm. the other way around. There are some people that would say it's not going to be far off before it's the power shifts. But for now, it, we're able to use AI to our benefits in the way that we want to use it. But yeah, you can't replace human creativity and thinking. Yeah, no, because I've heard you speak before on podcasts about vanilla posts oh, and how you God, can spot yeah, them a mile like... off. Bug bear. You really can. And it's interesting. You know, we we do all our we do social media management for a lot of our, our clients and we're behind the scenes, they're posting for them and their content and providing them with social campaigns with them, with their guidance and with their branding, their messaging. But ultimately we write from scratch every single post and we develop the creative very organically um, and so I think that's very important if you look through LinkedIn you can spot vanilla content a mile off and that's really important don't get sucked into thinking you're being really clever and turning out a post every day and thinking great we're going to beat the algorithm because the your followers will walk with their feet and then you've yeah. just completely eradicated your engagement yeah, I think you can definitely tell when someone's just oh, stuck something yeah. in God, and asked yeah. it to come out. The words, the everything, the way it's laid out. It's, yeah, no. There is a there is a guy called uh, the brilliant press press uh, title and journalist called uh, an Adidat, and he just did a recently. Um, I was doing a comment for him, and he did an AI generated image of me, and I gotta say, I really liked that. It was gorgeous. <laughs> if only I looked like that. So yeah, it can be done to enhance. Oh well, yeah. Then when um when Bar the Barbie film came out, they had one, didn't they? You could put in your own photo, yeah. and then it would it would generate what you'd look like as Barbie. Oh, I quite like that we one. We all would all look better. <laughs> but then it also runs into trouble, doesn't it? There was recently the Google issue where it wouldn't. There was AI's got so many biases in it, maybe yeah. that have been put in there. So that's the that's the thing, you know. It was, it was asking awesome. it to to give images of 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 soldiers from certain time periods and it was almost didn't want to be racist but it was giving you know a black nazi or black soldier whether it, it they just weren't the right historical pictures so there are a lot of biases in ai do you 100%. think that's an issue sort of for women specifically or do you think for everyone i mean well not obviously because it's it's race if it's being racist then it can be sexist like, as you say it's, it's only as good as the person using it but it's also what it's being fed as well. Absolutely. So it cannot compute biases. Um, so there's been some epic fails. And I don't think it's just for women. It's stereotypes. It only understands the stereotypes. And I have seen many examples where, especially by based on location, geographical location, oh, my God, it's so racist, the stereotypes that it brings up or the gender type for that region and it's I, I definitely think be wary because a, if you rely solely on AI you are getting into dangerous ground and I think Joanna you were talking I know I've heard you talk before about one example is that art history isn't it where yeah it hasn't tell me to remind me again of that because I thought that was really interesting yeah there's a, well I've got a friend she's an artist and I was speaking to her about this and about the podcast and how I'd like to have her on and she said well I don't really no I'm not interested you know I'm I don't know about AI and I said but you know look at graphic designers and look at pictures and images because we both did we both of us have studied photography at art college and I said you know there are machines that can put paint on a canvas and she was saying that she listens to um someone I was just talking to her name because then she was going to say she said basically women have been written out of art history yeah. so if AI is being fed you know information historical information up to now you wouldn't imagine there were many female artists. It's um, Katie Hessel, she's called, and she's got a podcast. I'll put a link in the show notes. I think it's um, 
it's about great women artists. I think that's the title of it. But basically, yeah, women have been written out I of know. art history. So, so imagine, if imagine. an AI, yeah, yeah would, you, go. you ask it to do it, it's not going to be able to find it. So I think this is where perhaps we as women, or well, everybody, it's everybody's responsibility. It's not just our responsibility, but I think it's very easy for everyone to just put in what they know. But I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done, perhaps, if you agree, you know, to to get more women into the industry so that we can make sure that women are being included. Because then if you're using generative AI or like, you know, all these uh, LLMs and like chat GPT and everything, if it doesn't know about women, how is it going to be giving a... So the, I mean, if you imagine if you typed in in chat GPT and you were doing your sixth form homework on it and you put, what are the great art artists of the X century? And it would yeah. just list men or yeah. it would start the sentence with the men of art history are. So, it, it, but it's an element to which this is common sense. And also that sometimes when you're using it for that purpose, it's great for research, but it shouldn't be done to dictate what you're going to write. Otherwise, yeah. that's close to being plagiarism anyway. And you should come out of your own brain with what you know and do your own research. And I think that's really important. And the good news is for women, we're rewriting a lot of the narrative anyway. And there's so many strong female voices. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned there, Joanna, this is about encouraging women into the industry. What I think is interesting, and I'm going to, I'm going to be a bit, put my neck on the line slightly by saying this. I personally think that AI is an opportunity for there to be right now a level playing field. It mm -hmm. shouldn't be that we are in any way disadvantaged as women because it's new to all of us. Yeah. What I would advise is don't hold back on learning, researching, trying, testing, understanding. That's in your hands. So if you're ma a man or a woman or non-binary, mm -hmm. it is in your hands to learn how you can use AI. But when a new technology comes out, there is no historical reason why women cannot be as strong in this area. So I, re I really implore women to, to leap with <laughs> both feet, arms and legs into learning about AI. And don't miss this opportunity from that level playing field to continue to have an equal balance going forward. Yeah, I think that's great advice, Julia, definitely, because you're right. And I think sometimes it's possibly the way that we all view AI and you might, you know, I'm not saying that all women think like this or that all men don't, but you might, well, I don't need to use it. I've got it. Whereas, you know, sometimes it's easier to take the easy way out, isn't it? And yeah. just use a generative uh, language model. But I mean, and I've seen it done by both people. So yeah, you're right. It's totally a level playing field. And this is mm -hmm. the time that people need to get involved and need to embrace it and not be scared and be able to have their voices put into it because otherwise you're right, you're just you can't just accept what it gives you i think that's the other the thing, other thing well. as well you can't trust it we know that it hallucinates we know it you know like a child it wants to try and impress you so it will just if it doesn't know the answer it's going to make it up <laughs> i know I had, yeah i think as well what's really interesting is i'm, I'm co-founder of digital leading ladies that you mentioned at the start and i'm, co I'm also part of many industry groups but digital leading ladies immediately it came out a year ago, we set up, we have lots of other splinter groups within the community chat. And one of those immediately was generative AI and AI. So there is a whole conversation going on. And I would recommend people lean into communities and ask stupid questions and be honest yeah. about what you do and you don't know. Ask for research. And does anyone know anything about this? Has anyone heard of any good, uh, good news? And also when you're part of a community group, everybody shares it's so brilliant, the support and the sharing and, and knowledge sharing that this provides. So I think I'm seeing it day, every day. People are wanting to learn. And I see that on the, the men and women's groups and also the female groups as well that I'm involved in. Fantastic, because I, I do feel that I'm quite new to this field. <laughs> so I'm learning. I'm hoping our audience is going to be learning with me as well as we find out more about to do. Because you, um, I know you've talked about your son before and how he yeah. was using, how he's a writer and he was using Fiverr. And yeah, could you go into yeah, that? You'll tell the story much better yeah, than I Yeah, definitely. Will. And I, I spoke to David about this when I was with him on his podcast. And my son actually was on the Creators with AI podcast talking about this. And this is really interesting. So it's 16 he was doing really well as a um, making pocket money, but good pocket money on Fiverr, graphic design and non-fiction uh, and non-fiction, uh, violent fiction. Uh, God knows what it was. I barely, I don't take too much notice of the actual words he says because it's horrifying. 
but he was doing really well. And then suddenly chat GPT kicked in and you could, the graphic design immediately fell off because you could generate images and logos really quickly, which was what he was doing. Cause obviously he's inexperienced, but his writing also fell off. So he just accepted it. But three months later, he decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my profile that a guaranteed written, not using chat GPT and mm -hmm. up came the orders again because they'd had three months of receiving cheap but all chat gpt generated scripts because a lot of times it's like you're getting paid a pittance for a thousand words two thousand words so of course people most people would try and do it as quickly as possible and therefore they would use chat gpt and his orders started flying back in again because he has to write some weird stuff and it comes out of his brain and that's it's amazing. It's now it's turning that corner um, and he's used it to his advantage. So, again, that's where people are using ChatGPT in the wrong way. They're using it lazily, I suppose, because then yeah. it's not effective. It's not no. creative thinking. It's yeah. not it's not going to be interesting to the reader, the listener, the viewer. That's got to come yeah. from our brains, which are weird and wonderful and unique. Totally agree. And I say at the moment, it's only learning from what it's been given already. And yeah. that was just jumping back to the art example for a second. Someone else uh, told me that if you fed in all the paintings and all the artwork, you know, and, you know, you asked AI to come up with, you know, a painting of something in, in the style of someone, you know, it could come up with Picasso or a Monet or something like that. But it would find modern art completely impossible. It would never come up with a Jackson Pollock with all the, you know, the yeah. paint just splattered onto it because that doesn't make any sense. Like how would a computer, well, at the moment, I mean, who knows what will happen in the next five to 10 years or however long, maybe quicker than that, but it would never come up with that because, because it wouldn't be able to to do that because it would probably become more photorealistic or something, Absolutely. you know, it would kind of get rid of the dots and get rid of the, the lines. And yeah, so I think it's, you're right, it's how people are using it. And it's it's definitely a tool, isn't it? It's yeah to save time. I mean, is that how you'd say it sort of fits in your workplace? It's sort of, yeah, it gives you more time to be creative. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we always say to the team, you know, use use it with caution, use it with an understanding that we control it and this makes us faster and more efficient. Um, I, I think for a lot of people, it's it's understanding the future, the future can seem really scary with AI in there, but it's about just picking the bits that you need that help you work faster and better there's a, we, for example we'll write all of our all of our copy and thought leadership pieces and all the content we produce is done using our to be a seven incredible journalists at the digital voice there is a tool though that's called copysmith.ai and that one i would call out because we do so many posts on our own posts what it's doing is it's just giving you sometimes if you're doing a lot of social posts just gives you a different slant on how you can say the same thing so you can type very quickly and just go, I've got brain fudge. What would you say about this? Or how would you write this differently? Most of the time, you, you take them what you need and only what you need. And just remember that, that you've got to have the creativity at the heart of it. Um, I, I, even, I've got to be honest, even I'm slightly nervous about it. You know, I think we'd be, I, you'd be naive not to be concerned. Um, does it affect the future roles? How does that mm. look for, for my, my children are 17 and 18? You know, what is their future looking like? What I'm seeing, though, is that they already understand that the roles and the university degrees and the courses they do have to go down a route that's going to be complementary to AI and yeah. isn't going to be eradicated to the best of their knowledge. The other good thing is my daughter is first year of A-levels. They're already learning way more about AI than you could ever imagine. My daughter's writing her EPQ on generative AI. She's 17. Well, wow. that was done off her, not me saying anything about it. I'm proud as punch because I was like, that's good timing. Um, so I think, and she goes to an all girls school, all girls grammar school. So I think it shows how much they're learning at school about this. They're preparing themselves for a world in which it's going to be just part, it's going to be part of their life. And don't forget 20 years ago, a lot of us went, oh my God, the, the internet is going to get, you know, going to get rid of all newspapers. It's going to change the world. It's going to uh, eradicate so many roles and there was so much fear, but all that's happened is roles have shifted, changed, and you've just got to move with it. Just don't yeah. be left behind. So definitely. I think there, that's 
Yeah. I was going to ask you what your thoughts were on the future of AI, but you basically just answered that already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd say the, the other bit is, is um, you know, I obviously work in the digital advertising industry. And what I find really interesting is that when AI is used, for example, to optimize campaigns, to understand the data insights, to maximize performance, it's a really heady mix of data sets, creative, AI, that's going to give you your highest probability of success and performance. We're mm. going to start being able to constantly show what performs, what works. And that's in my that's in the industry I know and love. But there are, if that's with every industry you're in, it does save resources. It does make us more efficient. And my advice, and I probably have hammered this home, is lean into it to understand what it can do to make you smarter, not lazier. So when you're doing something, you think, I did that because I, I ran out of time. That's not a great use of it. That's just make more time, do it properly. But when it's done and it's done very cleverly, I'm all for it. Yeah. I love that. Smarter, not lazier. Mm. I think that's yeah. Yeah, what AI will do for us. So this has been fantastic, Julia. I've learned so much. You've got some great, great examples. Where can our audience learn more about this? Like where can they find Digital Leading Ladies or what, what are the communities? You'd mentioned communities and getting involved. Yeah. Where can people look for these? How do they how do they find them? So obviously, and, and bear with me to your audience because I'm very specific to certain areas of the industry. So there's an incredible group called the Ad Tech Group run by John Walsh that has an AI chat within it as well. Um, that's again, you have to sort of, it's it's always full, but you can request to join these kind of communities. Digital Leading Ladies is for very senior women founders, directors, and it's done by recommendation. But there's other networks, communities like Bloom, the Women in Programmatic Network, Wackle, She Says, they're all there for the for, for finding really. Um, I would recommend as well, there's some amazing pieces of AI content to look out for. One is CO2, I think it's it, C-O-A-T-U-E, the okay. AI revolution. Another one is Talent Alpha, the world of work AI'd. Um, and there's a lot, if you just search up in the news at the moment, Digiday just came out today with a piece about what publishers, how publishers are harnessing AI. So there's always you can consume just by a simple Google search, but there is there is lots out there. It's quite heavy reading, so take what you need. And and digest in small chunks. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, that's what I find easier. All right, others are we spending all our time learning about it and not doing anything with I it? No. And it, well, the best thing of all is just to test it. Um, a lot of the tools that are out there, and I think there's, there's I named a few at the start, and they're just ones mm. I use, but there are plenty more. And what I would say is just test, test, and see what works. So a lot of them actually aren't. Um, I'll say it again because he's walking past, and you can edit that. A lot of them aren't really going to deliver what you need and are, are going to be so complex that you'll take longer to learn them. But cherry pick. There are plenty to choose from and just test them. Yeah. And just, yeah, do your research as well. So you're yeah, yeah. checking, fact checking. Because I think if an intern came and gave you something, you, you know, you'd probably fact check it as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> or just check it's giving you the right details. No, that's brilliant. And where can people find you, Julia? Oh, there's lots of places. You just look out for the digital voice, but we're mm. on the digital voice.kdk, LinkedIn, Insta, YouTube, X, and of course, our podcast is off record on point, which is a workplace culture. And actually, part of that is it's about well being in the workplace and making sure you're taking care of your team and you're taking care of yourselves. And I do think there's a lot of movement in that well-being space using AI that's very clever. Um, and there's other tools that make teams' lives more efficient. There's, right now, I think there's a latest stat that says 50, there was a mental health uh, survey and it showed that 55% of people feel that life right now is really demanding. And yet this is in a time when AI is supposed to be making our lives easier. So it's not doing its job. It's making, it's, it feels more pressure and there's more demands on us. So if AI can alleviate some of that, I'm all in and all for it. Fantastic. Brilliant. We'll put all the links in the show notes. Oh, so wonderful. thank you so much for coming oh, on. Thank women you with so AI, much Julia. for having me on this. And, and all credit to you. I love this fact. And I've got so, so many women that have got far more clever and interesting things than me to say about it. So I look forward to hearing from the other guests as well. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you. It's been a joy to speak to you. Thank you.